Edison, the most underrated yet confusing and overly complicated plugin inside of FL Studio. I'm going to teach you how to do it in a very simple and easy way to understand. And this video is a clip from a longer video called the ABCs of FL Studio, which you can find by going to the link in the description. Okay, sorry. So this right here is Edison. And I'm only going to show you the things that I think you need to know for it because there's a lot of things you can do in here. Like for example, reverb, but like I'm just going to use reverb plugins for reverb. I'm not going to use Edison. FL Studio is a little overly complex sometimes because it's a lot more editable than most dolls. It's kind of like Android. You can do whatever you want to. But Ableton is more like iPhone, where you're in a prison, but you're in like a pretty organized prison. FL Studio is complete chaos. So I'm only going to show you what I think is important from Edison for you to know. Let's start with recording in Edison. If you go up here right beside the record button, there are a bunch of different ways you can record. So if you go to now and you hit record, it just starts recording right now. If you go to on input and then you hit the record button, it won't start recording until there's input. Input and on input are basically the same thing, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. Now, a really interesting one is called on play. This will only record whenever you click play in the playlist. So this is very useful for whenever you need something to be on beat. For example, let's say I just wanted to record this section. If I click Edison, I go on play, and we hit play, ba da da da. Da, 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 da. It'll have stopping points that are on beat. So if I were to drag this into the playlist, which you do by hitting this right here, this little mouse icon, you drag it in, you can see that it's perfectly on beat. If I were to slice where this little icon is, it'll keep it, that icon keeps it where there's no overlap. And these little things called song jump, that's just a marker of where it stopped recording. So if there was a section you recorded and you didn't like it, you could just double click it and hit delete. And then it still keeps it on beat. That's pretty much it for recording in Edison. But let's say you want to edit in Edison. You can drag in either from your file explorer or from your browser. So let's just put in this 808. Click play. We have the 808. If you want to have this looping, you just click this. And it'll just keep looping it. That's it. And this button right here slaves the playback to host. All that means is that every time you click play in the playlist, it'll play the sample in Edison. I don't know why you would do that, but that's what you can do. Now, one cool feature of Edison is this normalize button. Just click it and it normalizes the sample just like you would do in the actual sample settings. Now the next one is fade in, de-click in, which just removes any clicks and makes it fade. I'm just gonna undo that by clicking this. I don't know what run script is and I don't think you need to either. Reverb, why? We got fruity reverb too. Why would we need to do that? Equalizer, why? Look, do you see this? Who the f EQs like this? Nobody. So we're not going to use it. You could add a region, I guess. If you click any section of this, you can go to add region. You've got a marker. Don't know why you would need that. I guess if you wanted to delete a certain section. Claw machine. I don't know what that is. I don't think it's necessary. And trim side noise or gate noise. That's just like if you have something in the sample, like this little area of silence where you don't want it, you just click that and it goes away. Time stretch is just exactly like time stretching in the actual sample. Blur, now this is something I actually enjoy using sometimes. This is really great for whenever you have a vocal or something like that that you wanna turn into more of a pad, which you could just drench and reverb, but the blur tool gives it a really nice sound. So let's just say we got this piano. I'm just gonna normalize it, make it louder. Now if you go to the blur tool, you can choose an amount, which is going to tell FL Studio how much you want to blur it. So I'm just going to turn the amount up a lot so you can really hear the effect. Let's preview it. So it just kind of sounds like it has a lot of reverb on it. And you can mess with this right here.
And basically what I think the blur tool is doing is taking the signal, like taking the piano note, and then repeating it a bunch of times. And that's how reverb and delays are made. All a reverb plugin is, is the same sample played so fast over and over again that it sounds like it's in a room. So these waveforms are just showing how fast it's gonna play that note over and over again. So if you wanted something more gated, you would keep it lower, and the more you increase it, the more it's gonna be blurred, pretty much. That's pretty much it for the blur tool. Oh, the cleanup denoise is really good. Let me show you an example by recording something in. Taco Bell is good. Taco Bell is great. What? Taco Bell is good. And let's say I have some room noise, like right here. And I want to get rid of that. First, before you do anything, you have to select the noise that you don't like. And then you go up here and you click it and that's gonna acquire a noise profile of the noise that you want gone. So this is gonna tell FL Studio what noise you don't like. So I'll click that. It has acquired the noise profile. And now we deselect it and we just select everything. And we go to clean up denoise. And it just took that noise that we selected earlier and took it out of the whole sample to hopefully give it a little bit more clean of a recording. I don't actually use this much anymore because we have things like RX-7 and AI tools that are better than this, but it, it does okay. Taco Bell is good. Taco Bell is great. And then you can go to the amount and choose how drastic you want the effect to be. Taco Bell is good. Taco Bell is great. And it did actually take out a little bit of that room noise, but it's nothing crazy. Now we have medium auto slicing, which is just the same thing in Slice X, where you just click it and it auto chops it up for you. Then if you have a sample that you've edited, you can save it and just put it into a sample pack or something. Then if you just want to put it in the playlist, you can either do send to playlist, which will just send it straight to the playlist like that, or you can click here and you can drag it in. Now, another cool thing about Edison is this tools icon right here. You can reverse it and just mess with it any way you want to. But the only tool I really like to use is to convert to score and dump to piano roll. Let's just say you have a piano loop. This is a piano loop from my stable audio sample pack, which you can get in my Patreon. And what if you're like, I like this loop, but I want to hear what that sounds like on another instrument. All you have to do is create a pattern with an instrument. So let's just do, let's just do flex. And then make sure that you click this little rectangle beside flex before you dump to piano roll. Go back into Edison, go to tools and go to convert to score and dump to piano roll. Now this is going to take what it can analyze from the audio and turn it into MIDI. The only thing is it usually doesn't get it exactly right, but it, it can be helpful. So yeah, it's not fantastic, but it can give you some cool results sometimes, especially if you have something that's less chord based and really just a melody. If you want to know more about FL Studio, check out the video in the description called The ABCs of FL Studio, where I go through everything from A to Z on FL Studio. I hope this was helpful, and let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to see.